Um, calling is the bedrock to ministry. And so I just, I want to say this again. There's a lot of people who are working in churches that are great people who love Jesus, who are gifted, but I don't know if they're all called. And I mean, vocationally called, we're all called, we're all priests of God. We all access all that. But when I was again in, I've probably had two or three moments of wanting to like close down in ministry, but I would say I would use the the word like clinical depression, despair. I've had a clinical moment before, almost in a mini church split here, but despair was a different one. One of the only things that kept me going again was calling. Mm. Um, I, I did this actually at um, at uh, Connexus's um, Canadian Church Conference they do a few years yeah. ago, where I just like spiritual gifts, I walk through calling theology because there's four calling theo- vocational theologies in the scripture, and they're all very different. There's, you know, Paul and Jeremiah, you're screwed, you have no choice, I've called you, it's done, don't even talk to me, just move on. John the Baptist, you know, you didn't have a say, I don't care how much of an Arminian you are, tough, it's happening. Uh, There's the family calling Hannah to Samuel, I will give this child unto the Lord, very anti-North American, what what about my psychology degree? Irrelevant, mom's dedicated to the ministry. Okay, the third one is Timothy, the community puts their hands and says, we see a grouping of gifts in you, we want to affirm them, or we lay hands on you, we affirm this go. And the fourth one is in the book of Acts, I think it's 17, it just says they voted on elders. <laughs> said you and you, right? Um, the reason why you have to have all four, by the way, is because some of them feel very supernatural, some of them feel semi-supernatural, and some of them don't at all. And you can begin to start dismissing each other's calling culture or calling experience because you're like, well, you think you're so spiritual because Gabriel showed up to you and I'm just a guy, a business guy who became a pastor. Throw that all out. Mm. Uh, when you when you start mutually submitting and realizing there's four models, not one, a lot more unity on leadership teams. But the point is, when everything falls apart, were you vocationally called by the Trinity before the beginning of time to be a leader in this moment? If the answer is yes, stay the course. Paul says it explicitly. I don't care if you judge me. I don't even judge myself. Jesus is way more terrifying. I will be judged on judgment day by him. So you can put your Twitter away, your Instagram, you can say anything you want, but just so you know, you're not as dangerous as Jesus is. So I'm going to live my calling theology through that lens. Mm -hmm. So calling is critical and we need a new generation of people who don't just think ministry is cool or ministry is interesting or it's a way to express my artistic belief because I didn't get into the movie industry. We need people who are literally commissioned by the living Jesus to be bearers of the gospel unashamedly and are called into varieties of all different types of ministry. And we're, again, all called, I don't believe in a second sec, secular sacred divide. If you're a nurse or a doctor or a plumber, a stay-at-home dad, uh, you know, you can, you do all things to the glory of God, use spiritual gifts, but we need vocational leaders who in this post-Christian, de-Christian, racially tensioned, hostile deconstruction, dangerous, politically fraying moment are called to proclaim the Lordship of Jesus Christ and his word and forget what everyone says. Mm. 